In this video, we're going to cover how to design a custom vanity with two sinks in it. When designing custom vanities, it is important to consider how the vanity is going to be ordered. If the vanity is going to be ordered as multiple cabinets that are assembled on site, it's better to design the vanity as individual cabinets. In this example, we're going to assume the vanity is ordered as a larger single unit ready to fit into place. The first step in designing the custom vanity is to place a base cabinet and adjust it to your desired width. So I'm going to go up to the cabinetry tools, select the base cabinet tool, and then just come in and place a base cabinet in the corner. Next, prior to resizing it, we're just going to check that our temporary dimensions are turned on, and then select the base cabinet. You can see that the width is currently 24 inches, and then just using the edit handle on the left hand side, I'm going to select it and resize it to my desired width. In this case, that width is 108 inches. Next, if we take a look at a photo of what the final vanity will look like, you'll notice that the vanity has a thicker countertop and it has a backsplash coming up behind it. So let's make these adjustments. So with the base cabinet selected, I'm just going to select on open object in the bottom left hand corner. This is going to open up the base cabinet specification. Let's first make a change to the countertop. So I'm going to come down to the countertop and where it says thickness, I'm going to add an inch and a half to the thickness and then press tab to accept that change. Now when I press tab there in the 3D preview on the right hand side, you might have noticed that the countertop thickness increased, but the box height decreased. So what we need to do is add an inch and a half to our overall cabinet height. So under the field for the height, we're going to come in and then we're going to add an inch and a half to that. Now our cabinet height is 37 and a half inches. Our countertop thickness is three inches. So our cabinet box height is 34 and a half inches. Next, let's specify that we want a backsplash coming up behind the base cabinet. You can do this either through the base cabinet specification or you can place a custom backsplash in the plan. Let's go ahead and do this through the base cabinet specification by checking the box for backsplash and then specifying that we want the height to be 10 inches and press tab. You'll notice in the 3D preview that the default backsplash material is a white subway tile material. So let's adjust it back in the plan to match the countertop material. So I'm going to click on OK to the base cabinet specification. And you can see how the countertop and backsplash is starting to come in. To make the backsplash match the countertop, we're going to select the material eyedropper tool, select the material off the countertop, and apply it to the backsplash. Next, let's replace the current toe kick with cabinet feet. There's two ways you can do this. The first way you can do this is by opening up the library browser, searching for the desired foot style, and applying it to the cabinet. The second method for applying cabinetry feet is through the cabinet specification dialog. Let's apply the feet through the cabinet specification dialog so we can learn about how the program is determining the size of the feet on the cabinet. So I'm going to come in and press spacebar, select the cabinet, and open up its specification. On the general panel, there's a section down here for toe kick, and we can see that the height of the toe kick is currently 4 inches. When we replace the toe kick with cabinet feet, Chief will automatically resize the feet height to 4 inches. So let's go ahead and add cabinetry feet by going up to the accessories panel, and you'll notice an option here that says feet. And then under foot style, we can click on library and this will open up the library browser. And then I'm just going to search for the foot style that I want to use, select it. And if we right click on it and select show in browser, you can see that this foot style resides underneath the core catalogs. Let's go ahead and click on okay to accept this foot style. And you can see how that's looking in the 3d preview. And then let's click okay to add it to the plan. And you can see how in the plan, Chief replaced the toe kick with cabinetry feet. Now, you'll notice that we need a foot right here in the center of the vanity. So let's go ahead and open up the library browser, place the cabinetry foot as a freestanding object, resize it so that it also has a four inch height, and then place it into the correct position. So we're gonna open up the library browser through the button in the top right hand corner. And then we're just going to search the library browser for the cabinet foot style. And then I'm just going to come in and if I click to place it, 
you can see how the foot height is currently greater than 4 inches. So let's double click on the cabinet foot to open up its specification. And under the height field, we're going to adjust this to be 4 inches. Press tab. You can see how that resizes in the 3D preview. And then let's click on OK. And pressing spacebar, you can see how that looks in the plan. And then let's go back to the floor plan view and place it in the correct position. So we're going to go back to the floor plan view. And we're going to zoom in close and press spacebar. And you can see where that foot currently is located. So we're just going to click to select it. And then we're going to use the point to point move tool. Select the center point on the foot and then come over to the cabinet and when we get the center of the cabinet click once to place it and then let's go ahead and close the library browser and if we go back to the 3D view you can see how that's now in the correct position and then let's get another cabinet foot on the back of the cabinet so we're going to go back to the floor plan view we're going to select the cabinet foot and we're going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to press copy reflect about object and then reflect the object about the center of it until we have the copy in the back. And if we look back in the 3D view, the only adjustment we need to make here is, is change the cabinetry foot material so that they match the body of the cabinet. So we're again going to go up to the material eyedropper, select a material off the cabinet, and then this time we're going to change our scoping mode into room mode. And then when we click on the cabinet foot, any material in the room that matches the material on the cabinet foot will update. And there we have the cabinet foot material updated. Pressing spacebar, if we go back to the floor plan view and we take a look at the cabinetry feet and the base cabinet, you'll notice that these two feet that we manually placed look a little bit out of place when compared to the base cabinet. And if we select on one of them, we can see in the bottom toolbar that the cabinet foot is on the millwork object layer, whereas the cabinet is on the cabinet's base layer. So if you wanted the cabinet feet to appear similarly to the base cabinet's layer, you might change the layer that they're on. So let's go ahead and do this by selecting the first foot and then holding control, we're going to select the second foot and then we're going to open the object specification and then we're going to go down to the layer panel and we're going to change it from being on the millwork layer over to the cabinet's base layer. And then we're going to go ahead and click OK. And now whenever we change our plan view, they'll change to display how the cabinet displays in the plan view. For the next step of the vanity design, let's design the face of the cabinet so the first, third, and fifth section are composed of three drawers and the second and fourth section are composed of double doors. So let's go back into the 3D view and we're going to double click on the cabinet to open up its specification. We're going to click on the doors on the right hand side and that'll bring us to the front side's back panel where you can see that we have the doors selected and using the controls on the right hand side we're going to delete the double doors and that'll remove the doors so that we just have an opening and then we'll delete that opening so that we just have one large drawer. Next, we need to divide this one large drawer up into five sections. So I'm going to click on the drawer, and in these controls there's an option that says split vertically. And when I do that, you can see that we now have two drawer sections. And I'm just going to do the split vertically command a couple of times until we have five separate sections. Now that we have five separate sections, let's specify that the second section and the fourth section are going to be double doors. So I'm going to start the second section by selecting it and down here under item type we're going to change it from a drawer to a double door and then we'll do the same thing on the fourth section. Now that we have the section specified as doors or drawers let's specify that all the drawer sections are going to be 12 inches wide. So I'm going to select the first drawer section and down here there's a field that says item width I'm going to specify that it's going to be 12 inches wide and press tab. And once you resize a section, you'll want to make sure that it's locked from auto resize because later we'll be auto resizing just the door sections. So there I have the first section specified. So let's specify the third section. Come down to the item width, type in 12 and press tab and verify it's locked from auto resize. And then we'll do the same thing on the last section. Specify that it's 12 inches press tab 
make sure it's locked from auto resize, and there we have all three drawer sections at our desired width. Next, we're going to auto resize the two double door sections using the equalize button. So I'm going to come up into our face items and I'm going to select the layout horizontal and notice that the three drawer sections are locked from auto resize, but the double door sections are not locked from auto resize. So with the layout horizontal selected, I'm just going to come over to where it says equalize and click once and there we have the double doors resized to 33 and 3 quarters of an inch. Next, if we take a look at a photo of the final design, let's divide up the drawer section so that they have three drawers that are equal heights. So I'm going to double click on the vanity to open up its specification, and I'm going to click on the drawer, and similar to the edits we just made, there's a button here that says split horizontally, and if we look in the 3D preview, you can see how we now have two drawer sections. We'll split it one more time, and then just like we did for the doors, we're going to auto resize the height of the drawer sections by coming to the layout vertical. You can see in the 3D preview how it selects the three drawers and then we'll select the equalize button. And now we know those drawers are all the same height. So let's make that edit for the middle drawer section, select it, select split horizontally, do that one more time. And then in the face item, select the layout vertical and then select the equalize button and then we'll do it one more time for the right hand section split horizontally one more split horizontally select the layout vertical click on equalize and if you're happy with how that looks you can go ahead and select OK to apply those changes to the plan. Next let's place the sinks into the cabinet. In Chief Architect cabinets can only have one sink automatically inserted into it so we're going to automatically insert the first sink and then manually place the second sink and we'll be making manual adjustments to make sure they're positioned where we want them. And to start off, let's bring our 3D view and our floor plan view side by side and then we're going to open up the library browser and then I already have a sink picked out in my user catalog that we want to use for this design and this sink is from Kohler and I'm going to come into the plan and click once on the vanity to place it. When I click to place it, the program is going to give us a warning message saying that the sink is going to be placed in the middle of the vanity and that all the drawers right here are going to be converted to false drawers. Let's go ahead and click on OK that we're fine with this for now. And you can see how that gets added to the plan. We're going to come back to the floor plan view and press space bar and then select this automatically inserted sink. And let's turn off our temporary dimensions since we don't need them. And we're going to select the sink, and if your first click there selected the cabinet, you might need to press tab on your keyboard to select other objects in the general vicinity of where you clicked so that you can select the sink and then just use the move handle in the middle to move it off to the side. And we're just going to move it in the general area on the right hand side of the cabinet of where it will eventually reside. Next, let's manually place the second sink in our plan by creating some room in our plan to the left of the vanity selecting the sink from the library browser and then coming in and just clicking to place it. When we click to place it, we're going to get a message saying that this object is meant to be automatically inserted into cabinets and asking if we're all right with placing it as a freestanding object. We're going to click on yes so that we're all right with this and you can see how it got placed off to the side and then pressing spacebar, we're going to select it and then we're going to move it in the general area in the cabinet where this one's going to be located and you can see how it's starting to come in. Next, I want to make sure that the sinks are precisely centered over the double door sections. To do this, we're going to get into an elevation view and draw a dimension line the width of the cabinet opening behind the doors and then we'll draw a CAD line that's centered on that dimension and then center the sink on that CAD line. So let's close our library browser close our 3D view, and then next to get into an elevation view by going up to our orthographic camera tools, selecting the wall elevation camera, and pointing it at the vanity. Now that we're in the wall elevation, the next thing we need to do is temporarily turn off the display of the cabinet doors. To do this, I'm going to click on the cabinet, 
And in the bottom toolbar, there's an option that says Object Layer Properties. Here we're gonna select the cabinet's doors and drawers layer, and then uncheck the display of it, and then click on OK. You can see how that turns off the display of the cabinet drawers and doors, and we can always turn that layer back on to see them. Next, we need to dimension the width of the cabinet door opening. To do this, we're gonna create a custom dimension default that only locates cabinet openings. So we're gonna go up to our default settings, and we're gonna come down to dimension, and then double click on dimensions. Here you can see we have the kitchen and bath dimension default selective, and it's our currently active dimension default. Let's create a copy of this dimension default and give the copy a name, and then click on OK. Next, we're gonna click on the locate manual panel, and this will be whenever we use the manual dimension tool, and then under locate objects, we'll check or uncheck the objects that we want the dimension to locate. So we'll uncheck openings, we'll come back to cabinets, and then uncheck the other options here. Under the cabinet section, we'll uncheck sides, corners, and countertops, and then we'll come down to openings, and this will be the only option we have checked, and we'll click on OK. And then down under currently active dimension defaults, we're gonna change from the kitchen and bath dimension defaults to our cabinet openings dimension defaults, and then click on OK, and then click on done. Back in the elevation view, we're gonna go up to our dimension tools, select the manual dimension tool, and then zoom in on this opening, and then start on the left-hand side and click and drag our mouse across the opening. And you can see how we've dimensioned the size of that opening. Next, we're gonna draw a CAD line, specify that the dimension line should locate that CAD line, and then get that CAD line in the center of the dimension. So I'm gonna go up to our CAD tools, and then click and drag a CAD line through the opening. And then I'm gonna press spacebar and I'm gonna select that dimension line that we drew. You can see that close to where I selected on that line, there's an extra diamond handle and I can click and hold my mouse on that diamond handle and bring it over to the dimension line. And you can now see how that dimension line is locating the CAD line. Next, I'm gonna select the CAD line and then select one of these dimension values and then I'm gonna type in the width of that dimension that it originally was, and then just divide it by two, and press enter, and now we have that CAD line precisely in the center of that opening. Next, we're gonna select the sink, and in the bottom toolbar, select the center object button, and then get it centered over the CAD line, and now we know that the sink is precisely centered in that door opening area. Next, we can delete this CAD line and delete that dimension line and then turn back on the display of the cabinet doors and drawers. Next, let's go back to the floor plan view and place a sink faucet, get it centered over the sink and then copy and reflect the faucet to the other side and then we'll take this sink and center it over the faucet. So going back to the floor plan view, I'm gonna open up the library browser. I'm gonna select a faucet that I already have picked out from my user catalog, and then I'm gonna come in and click once to place it, and then press spacebar, select the faucet, and then get it centered over the sink. Now, if we take a 3D overview, and we focus in on the sink, you can see that the faucet is merging through the backsplash. So we need to bring the faucet out a half inch, which is the backsplash thickness. So I'm going to do this in the floor plan view. I'm going to press spacebar, select the faucet, and then use the move handle. And as I'm moving it, I'm going to press tab on my keyboard. And this lets me enter in precise values for how far I want to move it. I'm going to come to the Y position. I'm going to move it a negative half inch in our Y coordinate and click on OK. And in the floor plan view, you can see how it's just a little bit away from the wall. And if we look in the 3D view, you can see how that now looks good. Let's go ahead and close our library browser and then select the faucet, press copy, reflect about, and reflect it about the center of the vanity. And you can now see how that's on the other side. Next, we need to get this sink centered on the faucet and we need to do this in the floor plan view. So let's go back to the floor plan view, select the sink, 
And again, you might need to press tab there to select it. Click on the center object button and then just come over and get it centered over the faucet. Next, if we turn on the crosshairs and we come to the front of the sink, you'll notice that the front of these sinks are not aligned. So with our automatically inserted sink selected, I'm going to again click on the center object button, come over to the cabinet, make sure the first one is centered, click on the manually placed sink, click on the center object button, make sure that one's centered, and with our crosshair still on, we can verify that from the front of the sinks, they're both aligned. Next, if we go back to the elevation view and press spacebar, you can see that these sinks are different heights. So we're again gonna select this sink and just use these crosshairs to visually make sure that they're aligned at the same height. And there I'm happy with the height of those sinks. And that's gonna complete the design of the custom vanity with two sinks in it. Some additional optional steps you could take here would be to place lights and mirrors above the sinks or group select all of the objects that we used here, turn them into an architectural block and add it to your user library to use in future plans.